Well, good morning and happy Easter. Easter. It's lovely to see you all here. Thank you for joining us. My name is Brian. I'm the assisting priest here at Emmanuel. I've been here about two and a half years. We are without, in between erectors right now. Um, Polly will share more at announcements uh, about our plan for the coming weeks. Um, but for today, welcome. Uh, everything you need to participate in our service is in your bulletin. All the words, all the instructions of sitting and standing are there for you. You are invited to participate as much or as little as you feel called. Uh, at announcements, I will give more instructions uh, for communion, which we will celebrate at the end of our service. Um, in just a moment, at the beginning of the music, I invite you to stand for our opening hymn.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. It's a reading from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, Anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him up on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us, who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as a first importance that I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to save us, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go, go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Once again, good morning and happy Easter. At the outset, I want to set your expectations for this sermon. Whether you have been celebrating Easter your whole life or you are new to this day, whether you're a regular here at Emmanuel or this is your first time visiting, nothing I will say this morning is anything new. The only thing to say about Easter is Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. That's the point. That's what this day celebrates and proclaims, and that reality stands at the center of the Christian faith. Christians have been proclaiming Christ crucified and risen for millennia over and over again. And that's the challenge of Easter for preachers. We tell the same story. We say the same thing year after year. Jesus is born. Jesus lives and proclaims the kingdom of God through his life, teaching, and miracles. Jesus dies a, a horrific and undeserved death on the cross. Jesus rises on the third day. Jesus ascends to heaven. And we find our mission in continuing the work God started in Christ. And then the whole cycle repeats. There is also a well-trodden path in the days leading up to Easter, the journey of Holy Week of which this day stands as a bookend. Over the last seven days, just as in every year past, we have told the story of and remembered Jesus' final days, how he entered into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday to great fanfare and expectation. As throngs of people put their hope in him as the one who would overturn all that robbed them of experiencing the fullness of life. How he gathered with his friends to show them what it means to be a community gathered in his name. A community that gathers around a table to share a meal in which to be reconciled with God and one another and to be nourished to be the body of Christ in the world. A community that, despite its imperfections and how regularly we miss the mark, is marked by love and service, even to those by whom we may feel betrayed. How he died on the cross, 
seemingly extinguishing the hope that life in this world would ever change. This morning, we proclaim that Christ is risen, that the love of God in Christ is more powerful than anything that seeks to rob humanity of the life for which we were created. And so we gather today on Easter, as in all the years past, to celebrate new life, the hope of resurrection, and proclaim that nothing, not even the darkest places of the human experience, can separate us from the love of God because Christ has died and Christ is risen. And yet, if we're honest with ourselves and with one another, it doesn't always feel like that. As much as we may have hoped, we didn't wake up this Easter morning with our world suddenly put back together. Wars continue to rage, Ukraine and Gaza, climate change, food insecurity, economic and political instability and violence continue to lead people to seek out new life and new hope far away from home as immigrants. Our lack of care for creation continues to threaten not only the world we enjoy, but also the stability of the world for those who will come after us. In our country, in our community, our public discourse is marred by partisanship and political division. Isms and phobias, whether based on race, gender, sexual identity, religion, immigration status, or any other identity, rob others of their God-given worth. On personal levels, addictions and long-lived habits continue to control lives. Marriages struggle. Abuse in all its form continues. Illness and injuries, whether chronic or sudden, still cause pain, loss, and death. And if all of that, and more, remains true about our world and our lives, what's the point? Is this story we tell even true? I heard a comment made this last week about Easter being a fresh start. And that made me think, perhaps a bit too much. Something caught my attention about it that at first I couldn't identify or put into words. Easter, put in the context of spring, uh, a new season, or the secular narrative of this day, the idea of a fresh start can emerge. But theologically, within the context of the Christian faith, Easter is not a fresh start. It's not as if everything that has gone wrong with our world, everything that is wrong, everything for which Christ died is gone as if it never has or isn't happening. That's not the point of or the hope of Easter. Easter is the promise that not even the worst can separate us, separate us from the love of God, and even the worst can be redeemed and made whole, even if that redemption is still just a future hope. Perhaps it is best put in a sign that a priest in a church at which I used to work had in his office. It said, not to spoil the ending, but everything's going to be okay. Easter gives us eyes to see that hope. Even when everything is not currently okay, the resurrection of Jesus changes the course of history. It doesn't erase it. The reality of Easter of Jesus dying and rising to defeat the power of death and evil offers us a lens through which to look at the world with hope, even if the world doesn't appear any different today than it did yesterday or the day before. At the risk of being overly historical or academic, theologians have discussed and debated the effects of Jesus' death and resurrection since the beginning of the church. Some have argued that Jesus came and died to show us how we ought to live. Others, that Jesus' death ransomed humanity from the devil, freeing us from the grips of evil. Or that God's law had been broken and a sacrifice was needed to balance the legal ledger paid with Jesus' life. All of these theories, and more, have basis in Scripture, but unpacking each is well with outside the purview of this sermon. But the dominant way of understanding Christ's death and resurrection throughout much of Christian history is worth noting. 
In this articulation of the meaning and effect of Christ's life, death, and resurrection, Jesus' life, his miracles, his teaching, his confrontation with the powers and principalities of evil and oppression, they point to a shift in the center of power in the universe. And this confrontation comes to a head on the cross with an apparent defeat of God's reign by the forces of evil. Then in a victorious turn of events, the resurrection of Jesus reveals the true basis of power in the universe, liberates humanity from the enslaving forces of sin and evil, and opens the way for reconciled relationship with God and the redemption of all things. While this framework for understanding Jesus' life, death, and resurrection was dominant for the first centuries of the church, over time it faded away and lost favor. The main reason was, as one author succinctly put it, the seeming lack of evidence of the victory of God in the historical realm in which we actually live. Forces of evil are still alive and active in our world. Humanity is, in many ways, still estranged and alienated by sin. Reconciliation is, in all corners of the globe and in interpersonal relationships, oftentimes more of a hope than a reality. It is true that the objective reality of Jesus' resurrection, of God's victory in Christ over all that robs us of life, is hard to see. But the continued pain, conflict, Loss, grief, and evil in our world doesn't discount God's work. It rather points to the fact that the grand story of God continues in our world. Because we can see it, at least in glimpses. When goodness is found in the midst of otherwise terrifying and horrific circumstances, when despite the cost, individuals and communities and churches stand up and fight for what is right and good against what is wrong, when even small glimmers of hope emerge in the midst of unbearable loss, when relationships are reconciled, when light shines through the darkness, when the dawn of Easter hope rises after what seems like an endless night, those things are as real is all that oftentimes feels like hell in our world. And they point us to the fact that God is not yet finished with us. Through Christ's resurrection, we know and have seen the truth. Death is not the end. And the goodness and wholeness of life now, no matter how fleeting it may seem, is only the beginning of life as it shall be for eternity. There is no suffering that cannot and will not be redeemed through Christ. On this Easter day, along with every other day, we have a choice. We can leave this place, having proclaimed the hope of resurrection and redemption, and go back to life as it was, overwhelmed and overcome by all that is broken in and around us. We, like the disciples on that first Easter, can see the tomb empty and live in fear in a world in which fear is justified. Or we can see the world as it truly is, through the hopeful and confident lens of resurrection, believing and living as though God has already won, even if evil is a stubborn loser. Even if the present doesn't always look like Easter, we can walk out into the world, proclaim that Christ is risen, and be empowered to join in the work God continues to do in our midst until the brokenness for which Christ lived, died, and rose again is no more. Amen. going to go straight to the back so you can grab your bulletins and we'll go.
All the way to the back. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. I will, with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by his grace. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And now it's time for you all to get a little bit wet. Thank you. 
Everybody got wet, right? Okay. Because I'd come back if you didn't. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, give us all reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he lo loves us. We give thanks this week for the birthdays of Gubby Barlow, Vivian Stumbles, and Nathan Isle. Lord, in your mercy, comfort, the, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. For those who have asked for our prayers, Pat Baxter, Alana Burdell, Ed Dobbin, Chris Dobbin, Charlie Estes, Peggy Ford, Bill Harris, Mike Jared, Evelyn Jimenez, Linda Klein, David Consmo, Emmett Maloof, Katie Osborne, Kathleen, Kathleen Parkinson, Katie P, Steve Shelton, Jean Smith, and Julie Wiegand. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially John Guilford and Louis Simpkins, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, as we greet one another, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Polly Ogden, and I am the Senior Warden, and want to thank you for coming here to worship with us this Easter on behalf of Emmanuel's Vestry. Uh, warm welcome to all of you, and a happy Easter. First of all, I want to start out by recognizing that uh, celebrations like this involve a small army, and offering thanks to Reverend Brian Gregory and our altar party here today, also to the Altar Guild and the Flower Guild that made this space so lovely and welcoming, um, to our music team that's been singing their little hearts out, um, to our office staff, Fred and Julene, for producing all of our service leaflets and other festivities, um, and to volunteers for the food, the Easter egg hunt, all of that stuff. So um, if you could show your thanks for all of those, those small army that helped get ready for today, that would be great. Okay, uh, next, this week, this week is a light week, so um, we will not have Bible study this week. Uh, there are too many conflicts. Bible study will resume a week from Tuesday. Um, however, this Friday night, we are proceeding with game night. So anybody who wants to come and play Yahtzee, or I think it's Mexican Train, will be doing that this Friday at 7 p.m. in the Narthex. Uh, also, we are um, next week. Uh, we are not having godly play. Um, again, we have too many conflicts and too much craziness, so we're taking a week off from godly play. But we'll be resuming it the following week. And uh, Kaylee asked that I remind people that we could really use some extra volunteers for doorkeepers, which is a easy assignment. It's mostly helping out with the person who's teaching during godly play. So if you're available to help out, um, please see Kaylee after the service. Also, uh, sometimes the week after Easter is a low attendance Sunday, but I want to encourage all of you to return next Sunday. And for the next six weeks, we're going to have a visiting rector preaching with us. His name is Father Frank Spina. He's a long time, uh, but now retired uh, instructor from SPU. He used to teach Old Testament, and while Old Testament might sound kind of dry, I've been assured by everybody who's seen Father Spina that he is not at all dry and that you'll enjoy him a lot. So feel free to join us next uh, Sunday as well as the next six Sundays for Father Frank Spina. On April 21st, we will have Compline Choir that will be singing here at Emmanuel for a 2 p.m. Easter Compline. Um, and that will be a special treat for us. That's the Compline Choir that regularly sings at the cathedral. So put it in your calendar. 3 p.m. Okay, thank you, Fred. 3 p.m. in your calendars. And finally, what you've all been waiting for today. Um, today, we will be having an Easter egg hunt. Uh, I noticed a lot of children have brought their little baskets. They're ready for this. Um, please queue up in the narthex after the service. Kaylee's going to be leading the Easter eggs, and I'm told they're going to be hidden in the main lawn and around the labyrinth area. So they will direct you in those spaces, but please don't run out there. Wait till you get the signal that we're starting. Anything else for announcements? Okay, fantastic. Have a happy Easter. Here at Emmanuel, uh, everyone is welcome to the table for communion. If you would like to receive bread and or the wine, simply hold your hands out uh, as the ser server comes by. If you would like to abstain from one or both of the elements, uh, just cross your arms at the altar and we will give you a blessing. If mobility is a concern for you, there are uh, rails on either side of the steps here, and ushers will be up front to assist you. If you would like us to bring communion to you, uh, we can certainly do that. Simply let an usher know, uh, and we will come bring communion to you. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice unto God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. This is the table not of the church, but of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love God and for those who want to know God more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long you who have tried to follow, and you who have failed. Come, because it is Christ who invites you to meet God here. I forgot to mention earlier, with communion, we do have gluten-free wafers, so if you would like one of those, simply let me know, and I will get you a gluten-free wafer.
I invite you to stand or kneel as you are able and you would like as we pray together the post-communion prayer on page 19 in your bulletin. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, Are there birthdays, anniversaries, or other celebrations that we can pray over this morning? Seeing no one coming full... Oh, yep. I knew there was at least two. Let us pray for a 75th birthday. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Very happy birthday to you. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin, to, into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia.